This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you as we gather together on this beautiful Sabbath morning. As we gather together with God's wonderful people, we gather together to worship Him and to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that is above all names. For at his name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We gather on this day to remember all those that gave their life on 9-11. That we might never forget what took place on that day. That we might remember the heroes of that day that was willing to give their lives to save others. We gather together to worship him. Hymn number 378, Amazing Grace. Oh, 
Good morning. How y'all this morning? Have any of you ever been lost? Have you gone out and maybe took a little journey in the woods and got lost and had a hard time finding your way back? Well, Jesus this morning talks about the sheep that was lost, the coin that was lost, and the youngest son that was lost. There are times in our lives when all of us uh, find ourselves lost. But Jesus, as the good shepherd, would go and look for the sheep, and he would search everywhere for it until he found it. And he would bring it back, and he would not chastise the sheep, or, but he would rejoice that he found the sheep. In the same way with the woman that lost a coin, when she found it, she went and gathered her neighbors and rejoiced that she had found the coin. And the Lord Jesus Christ loves each and every one of us so much that when we are lost, when we find ourselves away from him, he is always searching for us He's always looking for us. And he always has his eyes upon us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He will always be with us. And he was willing to go to the cross and shed his blood and give his life that each and every one of us that was walking in darkness and each and every one of us that was lost, he shed his blood and gave his life that our sins might be forgiven and that each and every one of us can have eternal life. That's how much he loves each and every one of us and that's how much he cares about us. And so as you journey along the way and sometimes you feel like you're lost, always know that you're not alone, that Jesus Christ will be there for you and be watching over you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious children. Heavenly Father, we ask that you just continue to watch over them, continue to walk with them day by day, continue to hold them close and bless them mightily. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming this morning. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember all those that are sick and those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to continue to be with each and every one of these and to touch these and walk with them in a mighty way. We continue to lift all those up that are in need of God's prayer today. We ask the Lord to encircle each and every one, that he might walk with each and every one, that he might hold each and every one close. And those that are walking in darkness and those that are lost, may his love reach out and encircle each and every one of them and hold them close. We will have a memorial service at 2.30 today for Nancy Butler. I hope that each and every one of you that possibly can come and be a part of it. We'd love to have you, and I know that it will mean so much to the family as we reach out to them during these days. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace today, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us so much that you were willing to give your son Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross 
that our sins might be forgiven. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to gather today and to worship you and to lift up your precious name. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are in need of your touch today. Heavenly Father, for those families that are struggling with life. Heavenly Father, for those that are dealing with bereavement. And Heavenly Father, those that are dealing with the uncertainty of the future. Lord, you know each and every one of these and Lord, you know what they're going through. Lord, we ask for your touch to be upon them as you give them faith and strength and courage, as you give them that assurance that you will never leave them nor forsake them, but you will be with them always, even unto the end. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of these precious children that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. You know our circumstances. Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, we just ask that you might touch each and every one of us, that you might lift us up and hold us close. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In him we find hope for each day and that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, thank you for that hope and for that assurance that you give unto each and every one of us gathered here today. And Heavenly Father, send the old time spirit, the Pentecostal power, that your Holy Spirit might guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go. That your will might be done in each and every one of our lives. That we might reach out to one another. That we might love one another. That we might care for one another. That we might make a difference in the lives of those around about us. Heavenly Father, may your spirit go with us throughout this service that everything we say and everything we do might bring glory and honor to your holy name. Heavenly Father, we continue to remember 9-11. We continue to remember all those families. We ask for your touch to continue to be upon each and every one of those families. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. He taught his disciples to pray. And we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 591, Rescue the Perishing. <laughs>
scripture reading is found on page 857. We're reading from Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. His compassion is over all his creation. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And your faithful ones shall bless you. For they shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And to tell of your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds. And the glorious splendor of your kingdom. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all who are fallen. Raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you. And you give them their food in due season. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. All the Lord's way are just. All the Lord's doings are kind. The Lord is near to all who call. To all who call upon the Lord in truth. The Lord fulfills desire of all the faithful. And hears their cry and saves them. And all who loves the Lord, the Lord preserves. All the wicked the Lord destroys. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. Senior Citizen Day, and we're recognizing all of the senior citizens that are 65 and older. And so I would just like to ask all those that are 65 and older if you will stand rather than having to make your way down to the altar, if all of you that are over 65 will, will stand. Fifteen years ago when I came here, um, we had more sitting and uh, we had more st uh, sitting down than those standing up. Over the 15 years of, of time, we noticed that some folks have reached 65, including myself. And so uh, we're thankful for each and every one of you. We're thankful that you are faithful to the church and the life of the church and the life of the community. This church would not be able to be the church that it is if it was not for you and your faithfulness. And this morning, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here and for coming and making this your church and continuing to serve the Lord all the days of your life. I ask the Lord's blessing to continue to be with each and every one of you. And this morning, we are going to give $25 from the budget to No Malaria so that in honor of the senior citizens. That will bring us to about $430 of the $500. So we're only $70 short. We have now to the end of December to raise that. So I hope that between now and then, we will finish filling up that box and and come up with the $500 for no malaria. But I appreciate all that you do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, these are your precious children. Thank you for each and every one of them. Heavenly Father, we ask that you just continue to watch over us, continue to hold us close, and bless us mightily. And Heavenly Father, may each and every one of these continue to be active in your kingdom that they might continue to make a difference in the lives of the world around about them. And Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Young folks, would y'all give them a hand? Thank y'all so much.
the, the, the beautiful flowers there by the pump in are given in memory of June Tucker's whose birthday was yesterday. By way of announcements, uh, today we are having our senior citizen luncheon uh, right after the worship service. I hope each and every one of you will stay and eat as we fellowship together. And then at 2.30 we will have a memorial service for Nancy. And then at 5 o'clock we will have the charge conference at Shiloh. So I hope that each and every one of you that was here last week for doing the budget and uh, all of the nomination, I hope that you will be able to be with us at 5 o'clock at Shiloh uh, as we uh, vote on the budget and all the other work that has to be done for the coming year. So hope to see each and every one of you at 5 o'clock uh, at Shiloh. Uh, remember, the quarters here are for the memorial home as we reach out to the memorial home to those at Christmas time as we provide the quarters for those patients there that they might have something to put in the drink machine uh, when so many people are without. So we just ask that you just continue to give and do for God's kingdom. Are there any other announcements that we need to make today? May we worship the Lord with our tithes and offering. As the ushers come in honor of and in memory of those who lost their lives at 9 11, the choir is going to sing God Bless America. If you would like to join in with us, we would ask you to do so.
Father, we truly thank you for these gifts and those that are given. Heavenly Father, that we might be able to continue to make a difference in the lives of people, that we might be able to reach out unto each and every one that's in need. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. just about get your breath <laughs> in the 15th chapter of the gospel of Luke beginning with verse 1 now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered this man welcomes sinners and he eats with them then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. 
Does he not lead the 90 and 9 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. And then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety and nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and she loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and say, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost coin. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angel of God over one sinner who repents. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life unto your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come this morning to hear that bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. For it is in Jesus' wonderful and precious name we pray. Amen. This morning, our subject is simply lost. Jesus is sitting at the table with the publicans, the tax collectors, and the sinners. And he is eating with them. The tax collectors were hated by the people because they collected the taxes for the Roman government. The sinners were those that were outcasts. And the Pharisees murmured about Jesus eating with those folks that were lost. Those few folks that people did not care anything about. And Jesus tells a parable about a lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost young son. This morning, have you ever been lost? Have you ever been in a place where you wondered whether or not you'd be able to find your way back out? It was an afternoon in Vietnam when six of us went out on a patrol. We would go out a mile or so from the compound to check out the compound and the perimeter of the compound in order to see what was happening around our compound. The six of us went out and usually we would get back into the compound before dark. But as it was on that day, we went out and the sergeant either could not read the compass or either he misread the compass and we got lost out there in the jungle. And before we could find our way back, darkness began to set in. And so we knew that there was no way that we could find our way through the darkness back to the compound because we didn't even know where the compound was. And so we made the decision to hunker down and wait through the night. And so the six of us sat around a circle with the dog 
in the middle and we waited. About midnight, we heard the sound of the Vietnamese coming our way. Didn't know whether they were the South Vietnamese or the Viet Cong or the North Vietnamese or the mountain yards that lived in the area of Pleiku. We waited, hoping that the dog would not make a noise. And we listened as the voices came our way and then went down beside us. We knew that we were outnumbered and we didn't know who they were. So we remained silent. It was raining and even though Vietnam is pretty warm at night, it got kind of cool in the mountains of Pleiku. We waited there until morning. And then when morning came, we were able to call back and find out where the compound was and how to make our way back to the compound. It was a beautiful sight to know that once we were lost, but now we had found our way back. An elderly couple the man was 87 and his wife was 85, was going to the store just a couple miles away. The man made the wrong turn and they drove for 800 miles before they found their way back home. They filled up with gas twice and the only way they made it back home was they had a minor accident and the policeman showed them the way back home because the man would not stop and ask for directions. Do you know any men like that? That we don't ever get lost, we just keep circling until we find our way out. But you know, folks, at some time or another, every one of us are lost. And there are a lot of lost folks in the world today. There are those that are lost to drugs and to alcohol in that culture world, where that cultural world has them in control. Where heroin and marijuana and, and meth and even prescription drugs control their lives. They are searching and they are searching. There are those that are lost financially Folks, you don't really know how many folks out there live from paycheck to paycheck. And it only takes one crisis for them to find themselves struggling in this world. Folks, there are people that are lost with anxiety and depression. We don't know why it affects people like it does. But we know that so often we find ourselves in slavery and bondage to that depression and to that anxiety. We struggle to, to make it from one day to the next. And there are those that are lost, that are struggling with some kind of disease that is affecting their body. There are folks that are lost 
And there are folks that are lost that don't want to be found. Because you see, they don't trust us as Christians. We say one thing and we do another. We say we'll pray for you, but do we really help them in their need? You remember when the disciples said to the Lord and the Lord said, I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was in prison and you did not visit me. I was sick and you did not attend to me. And the disciples said, but Lord, when did we not do those things? And Jesus said, when you've done it, not unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. Folks, there are people that are lost. And there are people that want to remain lost. And there are people that are searching for the Lord. Jesus Christ said, I have come not for those that are well, but for those that are sick. Those that don't need the doctor, I have come for those that are in need. The whole gospel is about the love of Christ and how he loves each and every one of us. Who would have a hundred sheep. And who would leave the 99 in the fold and go and look for the one? That's how much the Lord Jesus Christ loves each and every one of us. That he's willing to leave the 99 and go and search until he finds the one that is lost. And when he finds that one that is lost, he does not chastise it. He does not abuse it in any way. He simply places it on his shoulder and he rejoices as he brings it back into the fold. As it is with one with a lost coin. He looks everywhere. Under the bed, in the crevices, sweeps the whole house lights the candle, and when she finds it, she rejoices. Folks, that's how much the Lord cares about each and every one of us. That he's willing to go and do whatever it takes to find each and every one of us that's lost. I can see the father going out every day looking for that lost son. And then one day he looks out and he sees the sun coming and he r runs out and he grabs him and he hugs him and he holds on to him. He welcomes him back into the family. Puts the shoes on his feet and the ring on his finger because he's somebody. He was a child of God and now he is back into the family. They rejoice because that one that was lost is now found. Folks, the gospel is about the cross and the shed blood of Jesus Christ and how that shed blood makes the difference in each and every one of our lives. A minister asked a shepherd one day, he says, what do you think and what do you see as an image when someone says the good shepherd or the lamb of God. 
And the shepherd says, you know, in the springtime, when the mother sheep and begins to have the little lambs, a lot of times the mother dies, and a lot of times the little lamb dies. And sometimes you have this mother that's lost her little one, and you have this little one that's lost her mother. You would think that this lamb, that this mother would take this little lamb and take it as his own. But the shepherd said, she won't do it unless you take the blood of the dead lamb that the mama has lost and take the blood out of that lamb and put it on the little lamb that doesn't have a mother. And when you put the blood on the little lamb, then the mother sheep will then accept the lamb. That's the only way that the mother will accept the lamb is for the blood. Folks, that's what happened at the cross at Calvary. Jesus Christ loved you and he loved me so much that he was willing to shed his blood that our sins might be forgiven, that we might have eternal life. He says we walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another because the shed blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Folks, this morning, if there's any sin that's in your life, the Lord Jesus Christ is here to cleanse us from that sin and to make us whole. And then he wants us to make a difference in the world around about us. We promised that we would follow him. We promised that we would do his will. And so it's easy for us to reach out to those that look like us and act like us. But what about those that are hurting? What about those that are going through a difficult time? Are we willing to make a difference? Are we willing to give ourselves for the whole kingdom that the kingdom of God might come to each and every one of us? This morning, he's knocking at the heart's door and he wants to come in. Our closing hymn, This Is My Psalm, hymn number 437.
blessing for the meal and when the ladies get it together, we'll be ready to eat. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Thank you for what you did on the cross at Calvary as you shed your blood that our sins might be forgiven. Heavenly Father, touch each and every life that's here today. Draw them a little closer to you this day. And Heavenly Father, as we participate around your table, Lord, we ask that you might bless the food to the nourishment of our bodies as we serve you and serve one another. Continue to walk with us day by day. Continue to use each and every one of us for the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.